Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. Well, the big news over the last few weeks is that Scrivener have released an iOS version of their highly acclaimed writing app. Now, I last covered Scrivener over five years ago, and despite it being an awesome writing tool, I have to say I did give up on it when there was no easy cross-platform support for iOS. It's taken the developers much longer than they anticipated, but finally a brand new iOS app has been launched for the iPad and iPhone. I recently covered another writing app, which was Ulysses on the Mac and iOS, but whilst similar in its approach, Scrivener contains additional functionality that may well fit your needs better. So in this week's episode, I'll be revisiting Scrivener on the Mac and taking a look at the base functionality of the new iOS app. Next week, I'll drill down further and take a look at some of the more advanced concepts and capabilities on both the Mac and iOS. Now, Scrivener is a writer's toolbox and combines various tools and features to create, manipulate, and export long-form text. It's sort of a combination of a ring binder, a scrapbook, a corkboard, an outliner, text editor, and more. It allows you to work on your text without the constraints of formatting or layout, and gives you the ability to bring in research material into your Scrivener file itself for review while you're actually working on your text. Now, many people have used Scrivener to write various things, novels, plays, scripts, articles, training materials, and many other types of long-form text, but it's equally useful for working on short text extracts. All versions of Scrivener, and that includes the Mac version, iOS and Windows versions, can be used completely in isolation. But if you do want to sync your projects across the various platforms, Scrivener uses Dropbox as a robust syncing mechanism. So let's start by taking a look at the latest version of Scrivener on the Mac. So this is a cross over on literatureandlatte.com. This is the uh, homepage for the developers. You can download versions for Windows and for Mac OS X from here. Uh, if you want to, you can go across to the Mac App Store. Uh, the current version is version 2.8, and that's the most current version that supports uh, the integration with iOS. So you'll need to download Scrivener for the Mac uh, version 2.8. Now I've already downloaded and installed from the Mac App Store. So if I just tap on open and we get this automatic backups folder, let me just pop these windows down out of the way so we can focus on this window. Right, so we can automatically back up our Scrivener project. So even if you're going to save them in Dropbox, you can choose a separate backup folder. Uh, let me go ahead and say choose backup folder and I'll just uh, keep them in my documents folder for now. I'll say new folder, Scrivener backups. We'll say create and we'll say open. Okay, and we're now into project templates. Now there is a very good interactive tutorial, which I would recommend that you go through. It goes into things in a lot more detail than I can do in a couple of screencasts. So I'd recommend checking out the interactive tutorial. It is in fact um, a Scrivener project uh, with all the various sections in, very very easy to follow and very informative. Uh, there's a standard user manual, access to video tutorials, and then the templates themselves. So a standard empty project with no presets, and then some predefined ones for fiction. So if you want to write your novel, any non-fiction, script writing, poetry and lyrics, and miscellaneous. But I'm just going to go ahead and say blank. Down at the bottom, we've got various options. So if you want to set uh, a template as default, or you want to hide the getting started. In fact, let's hide getting started. I don't actually want to see that. That's good. And uh, options to import and export templates as well. Uh, these are fairly straightforward. Open recent files and open and existing files. But we haven't created any as of yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and say choose. Now by default, it's uh, giving us a name of untitled and it's prompting us to store within our documents folder. Now this particular project I will want to work on uh, later on. I want to work on it on my iOS app. So what I need to do is to save it within Dropbox. And what I would suggest, in fact, if you do this process on the iOS device first, it will prompt you to create a separate folder in Dropbox. But I'm gonna do this manually. So within Dropbox, I go to apps, say new folder, and I'm going to call this Scrivener. We'll say create. Now let's call this uh, podcast guide. This is going to be my first project. And we'll say create. Scrivener would like to access your contacts. This is fine. I'm going to say OK. You can say don't allow if you don't want to. But we're now in. So let me just uh, rearrange this screen. And let's have a little look at this user interface. 
Now, I am going to cover quite a bit of the original show that I did uh, five or six years ago because the core concepts really haven't changed. There have been some subtle differences, some subtle changes to the UI. Also, in the previous show, um, I wasn't doing subtitles then, so for accessibility, this show is subtitled. So I thought I would repeat some of the things I did uh, in the past, but also it saves you going back to the previous show and watching that right the way through. We can uh, bring you up to date using this new show. So first off, it's a fairly standard user interface. Uh, it's been modernized. We've got the icons across the top in the toolbar. We have this sidebar, which is our binder. Uh, more about the binder. That's quite an important aspect to the application. We have an editing panel in the middle, and uh, we have a formatting toolbar here as well. We also have an inspector panel that pops out when you actually tap on this eye. Now, it is useful for you to see these various elements on the Mac app because these are replicated across on the iOS app as well. Now, there are some other views as well, of course, with it being a modern Mac app. You can go into full screen mode. There are scratch pads. There are quick reference windows that pop out. There's a thing called the composition mode, which we'll look at, which is sort of like a distraction-free writing environment. But uh, we'll come back to those. Let's now take a look at the binder, which, as I said, is quite an important feature. Uh, within the binder, when you create a brand new file, you get these three sections. You get the draft section. Currently, that has just a single uh, document in it and all these things within drafts are called documents. Uh, documents can be anything from a single word to you know paragraphs and paragraphs of text but we'll have a look at creating documents. You have a research folder as well uh, currently empty but the nice thing with the research folder is that you can drag in files uh, pretty much any type of file that you might want to reference uh, for research so you might want to pull in URLs, PDFs, uh, images, uh, lots and lots of different elements you can drag in, media files as well, movie files, audio files, and you can keep those within your project and refer to them uh, when you're actually using Scrivener. You can also create Scrivener documents within your research section, uh, the difference being that only documents that you put into the draft section uh, will actually end up in your final output, but more about that later. And then there's a trash section as well. So anything you delete from the project first ends up in the internal trash, and then you can delete it from the internal trash. It's sort of separate from OS X's trash system. But let's go back to our draft folder and back to this first document here, which is called Untitled. Uh, if I actually go across and start typing in some text, Now, as you can see, the title of the document in the binder has changed to the first line. Also, we have a title here as well. Now, you can either edit the title from this position, or we can go across to the binder, double-click, and uh, open up and edit in the binder. So now that we have some text within our first document, we can go in, we can select. I can use the formatting controls to actually format the text. Now, I wouldn't get too hung up about formatting the text at this point because really, it really depends on how you come to export or uh, in the terms of Scrivener, how you come to compile the final document at the end. Might make some uh, changes to the formatting. But the formatting controls are there. If you want to go in and start formatting at this point, you can do. OK, let's go ahead and uh, let's add a new uh, document. So I can just click on here, say new, let's call this intro, tab in, uh, we'll put some text in. And let's add an additional document. I could use this plus down here at the bottom, adds another one. And one final one. Let's call this types of podcasts and let's put a bit more information in this particular document. The reason for taking this approach is, as I mentioned before, your drafts folder or the draft section, everything in here actually will end up in your final document when you come to export or compile the document. So by sort of splitting things into smaller and smaller chunks, it gives you greater flexibility. You can start to move the documents around. You can change the structure pretty much at will. For instance, now that I've got my thoughts out of my head into these four different documents, I might perhaps want the intro to be above the welcome document. I might want my types of podcasts document to be above that one. Uh, not logical in this instance, but um, as you can see, I can move these around pretty much at will. But what about this one? Let's say I wanted to split this long document into smaller documents. Uh, I could copy and paste, uh, or much easier, I can actually select a piece of the text. Let's say I want to uh, split this off at the audio podcast section. What I would do is go to documents, say split. Now I can split at selection, but uh, a much more useful option is split with selection as title. 
I click on there, you'll see now that if I go back to types of podcast, that's just the first paragraph. Uh, the audio podcast document is actually everything else that was in that first document. Let me do that again. So if I select enhanced podcasts, go to documents, say split, and with selection at title, that creates this new enhanced podcasts with everything below that section. And audio podcasts is just that one uh, section on its own. So now I can, if I want, I can drag this on top of types of podcasts and also enhanced podcasts. I can drag that on top of the original document. And now I have this section that I can hide away or expand. If I click on here. I can see the first document, the second document, and the third document as well. Now there is another view, I think called a Scrivenings view, which enables you to see all three documents in one view, which is quite neat. If I hold down the command key, click on the first one, click on the second one. So now I've got all three documents in a single view. So I can still read them as a contiguous document. I can edit them as well if I want to, but uh, I can use this Scrivenings view to uh, just go in, have a look at single documents, or use the command key to see a selection. Now, in effect, what we've done is to create a group of documents. And you'll notice across over here, there is this uh, group mode option. This enables us to see these documents in different ways. Now, currently we're in scrivening mode. If I was to tap away, uh, let's just select this enhanced podcast document and then go up to the top one. Right, currently I'm just seeing the top level document, the one that starts with digital content. If I click on this button here, this takes me directly into Scrivening's mode, and I can see all the sub documents within that group. Another option is to see the cork board. Now, this is something that's available on the Mac and also on the iPad, unfortunately not on the iPhone at the current release. But this enables us to have a look at the documents, the sub documents within the group as uh, these individual little uh, index cards. Now, we can actually update the cards. If I go to the inspector, we have this thing here called the synopsis. So if I select one of these cards, let's say audio podcasts and add a synopsis. That appears on my index card, or I can double click inside the index card and just type the synopsis straight into the card. Now you'll see as I mouse over the card, we actually see the contents of the document. And the nice thing about this sort of corkboard mode is that you can visualize uh, exactly what it is you have within your uh, overall document, and you can rearrange from this view as well. So if I wanted to move the enhanced podcast document in front of the audio podcast document, I just drag and drop it in the required location. But uh, let's move that back. Uh, we also have an outline mode as well, but we probably won't get too much into outlines in this particular show. So let me go back to Scrivening's mode. Now, the synopsis is actually just one type of metadata, and Scrivener has very rich support for different types of metadata. So we have labels, status, uh, we also have keywords, and there are some very clever things you can do, but perhaps we'll uh, leave looking at the metadata side of things until the advanced show in the next episode. Now, going back to the binder and the way we can arrange our documents. Now, you can also create standard folders if you don't want to have this uh, particular type of mechanism. I can click on this option down here. It gives us a new folder. Let's say I want this to be the intro section or intro sequence, say. I can drag that up into my binder. And I can then put intro in there. And I can put welcome in there as well. So I now have this group of documents. In fact, that's what is a podcast? I want to be above that. So there we go. So there's my three sections, the intro sequence in a folder, a separate document, and then a group of documents. It all makes it very, very, very flexible uh, when you come to create your final document. Now, while we're looking at the documents, let's have a look at the header and footer sections. So firstly, the document header, uh, we've got controls here to move through our document history. So I can see the last document viewed. I can also see the history menu. I have options to reveal in binder, look at the path, a few other options as well from this drop down menu. Across on the other side, I have options to go to the previous and the next document uh, in line in the binder, and then a split view. So if I click on here, you'll see now we have the option to see two files at the same time. Now I'm seeing the same file here, but if I was to, with this bottom window selected, go to enhanced podcasts, I can actually see uh, two separate documents in the same view. I can go to another view as well. If I hold down the Alt or Option key and click, we now get a vertical split view that enables to view two different documents. 
So to select a different document in the left-hand panel, I just select the left-hand panel. I wanted the intro in this particular side panel. I can explore that here and I can read a second document in this split view in the right-hand panel. In fact, you can actually edit both documents, not just read them. So both these documents are fully editable in either window. Uh, this is good for research as well. So if you have things in research, you can uh, have a look at research in one panel and then the document you're working on in another. But let's go back out of the split view. Uh, let's continue with the footer. So I've got an option down here to change the zoom level. If I want to zoom in, I can do. Let's put that back to 100%. I have a word count. If I click on the word count, I can see in more detail, include footnotes, include comments, etc. I also have an option to set a target. So this is currently 78 words. Let's say I wanted the target for this document to be 150 words. I can change it to characters as well, but we'll leave it at words. I can set notifications, but let's just leave it 150. Now I can see I've got 78 words out of a target of 150. And this little neat progress bar down here at the bottom. Uh, but let's remove that target. Okay, let's have a quick look at the research options. As I mentioned before, the research section allows you to store files in here. You can create a document if you want. If I wanted to create a document, I just hit the plus. So just a quick document with some research notes. But I could also, if I go across to the finder, uh, I've got a sample PDF. I can just drag that across, drop that in. Um, I've got some movie files. It will handle uh, media files as well, but I won't put them in at the moment because these are quite large. I want to keep the file size uh, down. Uh, the JPEG file, just drag that across. Uh, if you're in Safari, let me go across to Safari. If I wanted to drag this particular URL across, I could just drag it, drop it onto my research. And there we go, that opens it up actually within Scrivener for me. And of course, if I'm doing a note about diving at the 2015 European Games, what I could do is go into split view. And then on this right-hand panel, say, go into my intro, and I could start editing my note here, and at the same time refer to this particular website. Or if I wanted my sample PDF, go across, whoops, let me just close that down, go across to here, go to my PDF, and there is the PDF. Okay, let's go back to this panel and come out of split view. Now, there's still lots to cover on the Mac version, but uh, what I think we'll do now is we'll pause at that point on the Mac. And we'll come back to that in the next episode. And let's go across to the iPad and have a look at the brand new iOS version across on the iPad. Now, if you're a long-standing user of Scrivener, you'll probably be aware of the tortuous route that it's taken to actually bring the iOS version to the App Store. Um, the developers actually did outsource the development of the iOS version and had lots of problems. So eventually they took it back in house. And I think the main developer who has developed the iOS version is actually the guy who developed the Mac version as well. And as you can see from the App Store, it's only been out a couple of days. It's already got over 100 uh, five and four star reviews. Let me go into the reviews. There we go. Yep. Well, 100 ratings, the majority of which are five star reviews. And everybody is absolutely raving about the application. So it's a universal app uh, available for the iPad and iPhone. Um, I've not tried it very much on the iPhone, by the way. I've only really, uh, with the short time that I've had it, I wasn't part of the beta release. I've only really played with it on the iPad. So I'll focus mainly on the iPad today. I think the main difference between the iPad version and the iPhone version is that the iPhone doesn't support the corkboard view. But let's go ahead. I've installed it on my iPad. Let's go ahead and say open. Uh, we have some uh, opening slides, which you can just flick past. I'll take you through most of these. And we're now into the app itself. As with most iPad apps, we have a separate sidebar and then a working area on the right hand side. Now, I haven't synchronized this with Dropbox as of yet. So the options to create projects will just create them on my iPad and not synchronize with Dropbox. Before we do that, though, uh, just a quick word about the tutorial over here on the help. Uh, we actually have a full blown tutorial which takes you through everything. Uh, to do with Scrivener on the iPad. Again, in the same fashion as the Mac tutorial is very, very good. It's well worth having a look at this tutorial when you get a minute, uh, probably once you've been through the screencast for a bit more in-depth coverage. If I just go back out to projects, I won't actually create a project on the iPad. Uh, I'm actually going to work off Dropbox. So the first thing I need to do is to tap the sync icon up in the top corner. So if I tap there, um, if you haven't got Dropbox, you can update from iTunes. Again, a fairly 
uh, an elegant way of transferring files between your Mac and your iPad. But you can update from iTunes if you want. The option I do want is to link from Dropbox. There is no iCloud syncing uh, because of the, the file structure of the um, Scrivener project files. Unfortunately, they can't actually use iCloud to synchronize at the moment. So they have developed a very robust Dropbox integration. And uh, people have been commenting on how solid the Dropbox integration is. I'm going to go ahead and say link Dropbox. So Scrivener wants to open Dropbox. I have got the Dropbox app installed on my iPad and it's all configured. So I just need to go ahead and say open. And Scrivener would like to access the files and folders in your Dropbox. We'll say allow. Right, it's uh, prompting me to choose apps slash Scrivener. Now that's the folder that I created uh, in the first part of the tutorial uh, over on the Mac. Uh, you can select another folder if you want. I'm gonna suggest that you stick with the recommended one, uh, which is ticked and we'll just say done. Right, and now it will synchronize our Dropbox folders. Now, because this is a demo machine, there aren't that many files in there. If you have lots and lots of Scrivener files already in there, it might take you a little while to download them all, but here we go. I've now got a new entry in the side panel. I've got Dropbox, so the podcast guide, which is the document that I created. I also have an option here on my iPad. So if I did want to create a document on my iPad, I could use the option to tap to create a project. If we go back to the previous week's episode, uh, when you do store things on your iPad, uh, Scrivener isn't a document provider. So that will be sort of siloed and just accessible from Scrivener itself. Now, before we open the podcast guide document that I created across on the Mac and has been synchronized using Dropbox, let me go ahead and just create a project on my iPad, uh, just really to show you the uh, creation process. If I tap to create a project here, we'll give it a name. Now, you'll probably notice that we haven't been presented with the template chooser. So all those different types of templates uh, don't appear to be available on the iOS version at the first release. Now, if you did want to use one of those templates, you would have to create it across on the Mac and then synchronize it through Dropbox. But I'm just gonna go ahead and create this new project locally. So it's local test, we'll say create. Uh, where should it be saved? I'm gonna say on my iPad for now. Right, the thing I wanted to point out to you with this brand new document is the same structure on the binder in the side. So we'll come back to recent and bookmarks, but you'll notice that we have the draft section with a single untitled document, the research section, and also the trash section as well. So a new document mirrors exactly the uh, folder structure within the binder, uh, exactly the same as on the Mac version. So if I come out of projects, so now I've got two documents. I've got podcast guide, which is located in Dropbox, and I've got local test, which is located on my iPad. And you'll see across on the right-hand side, I can differentiate between them in this matrix. You can see down at the bottom, local test today, 11.29, located on my iPad, and podcast guide uh, today, 11.09, located in Dropbox. So from this point on, if I want to create a brand new project from the iOS device, and by the way, you can use the uh, iPad version or the iPhone version in complete isolation. Uh, if you don't have Scrivener on the Mac or on your PC, you don't have to worry about that. You can create fully blown documents and just have them uh, locally on your iPad or synchronize them with Dropbox and synchronize them with other iOS devices. So you don't necessarily need to have the Mac version unless you want access to those particular templates. Now, to create a new project from this point on, I could either hit the big square, create project, I'd get that pop-up. In fact, let's do that. i get the pop-up where I could name it, say create, and then have the option of where you want to store it, but let me just say cancel to that. I can also tap the plus up in the top corner as well. But enough of creating new projects. Let's go ahead and open our podcast guide that we synchronized with Dropbox. So if I tap on podcast guide, and that opens up the document that was created on the Mac. So let's explore the user interface. Uh, some quite subtle things you can do with Scrivener on iOS. So let's go through it slowly. As I say, we won't cover everything today, but uh, we'll cover the basics today, enough to get you working, and then we'll look at the advanced stuff next week. Right, so in this sidebar, we have uh, two sections at the top. So we have the recent and bookmarks. Now, recent is basically your document history. So if I tap in here, I can see all the documents within the project that I've been working on, and I can sort of jump straight to them. So if I wanted to go to audio podcasts, that would take me straight to that particular document. Let me just go back out a level. So audio podcast remains on display in the text entry area. Uh, I also have access to bookmarks. Now I don't have any bookmarks at the moment. I didn't create them on my Mac, but they would have synchronized across 
if I had. If I want to create a bookmark, for instance, if I want to create a bookmark to do with this uh, document here, audio podcasts, I just tap down in the bottom corner. That will actually create a bookmark. So now if I go back to recent and let's go to uh, what is a podcast, come back out a level, now go to bookmarks. It will give me a list of my bookmarks and I can just basically go straight there. So this is really good if you're working on an extremely large document and you have some sections that you want to refer to quickly. You can add them as bookmarks or you can use recent. Then we get into the binder and the binder, again, we have the three sections, draft, research and trash, the standard sections. Uh, you'll see some symbols. We have these four squares. We also have the little chevron as well. Now I can actually tap. Let's start with the draft section first. If I tap into the draft section, I see my structure. So I see the folder that I created. I see the uh, group of documents, the types of podcasts, and I see the single document on its own, what is a podcast. If I tap into the folder, the intro sequence, I see my two documents. I've got intro and welcome. Um, now they're in the wrong order, actually. I really want welcome to become before intro. So I can actually go into edit mode at this point if I want. So if I tap edit, I could use the little markers next to the documents to move these around. So if I tap and hold on welcome, I can just drag that up. I also have the option down here to go into move mode as well. So if I tap on here, I've got arrows. So with the selected option, I can, well, at the moment, I can only move that down, but I could tap the down arrow or the up arrow. I can uh, nest this now. So I can tap on the right hand arrow that will nest it, but I'll bring that back out a level and I will move it back up to where I want it to be and then say done. So you can sort of move things around using drag and drop or the arrow keys down at the bottom. Let's come back out to draft. In fact, let's just tap podcast guide and go back to the top level binder. Let's say I wanted to see the structure of my draft folder without having to drill in uh, down to each level. Well, you can actually do a swipe across to the left and then you can tap expand and that shows me the next level down. If I wanted to have a look at the contents of my intro sequence folder, again, I can swipe across, I can tap expand and that shows me the sub documents. And again, for the types of podcasts, swipe across, expand, and I can now see all my documents. Now, if I wanted to collapse these entries again, I can swipe across to the left. This time say collapse. And if I do the same again with the intro sequence, uh, you'll notice as well, we also have move and more. Move will bring up a new panel that allows me to move that folder into a new folder or to any other folder, but I'll say cancel that. If I swipe again, we also have a more option. Quick reference add to bookmarks. We'll look at these in bit more detail later. Let me uh, come away from here. We'll just say collapse. Now one other gesture on the sidebar is to swipe down and that gives us access to a search panel, but uh, we'll leave that for now. As I mentioned earlier, the corkboard view is supported on the iPad and you can see at a glance which folders uh, are supported in the corkboard view by this little small icon next to, uh, for example, the intro sequence folder. You see the little uh, visual representation of a corkboard. If I tap on there, takes me into the corkboard view. But you'll notice that the entry below, types of podcasts, that's not actually showing a corkboard view because this is the group of files, uh, the one where I dragged the documents on top of another document. If I tap on there, we actually see, in fact, let's expand this up. So I've got the digital content document, I've got the audio podcast and the enhanced podcasts, but I've got no corkboard view. In this particular instance where we have a group of documents to get to the corkboard view, we actually have to use the icon in the toolbar at the top. So next to the name of the document, I have the same icon that we see in the sidebar for standard folders. So if I just tap on here, we actually get the corkboard view for this particular document group. Now, one other difference between these, if you remember back to the Mac section, I actually entered the synopsis for each of these documents and the synopsis is displayed within the corkboard index cards. If I go back to the folder and tap on the corkboard view, you'll see I haven't actually got synopsis for these two documents. So I'm actually seeing the contents of the document itself. If I tap on the welcome document, you see welcome to my podcasting guide in this book, etc. Tap back, it's the same text. If I wanted to add a synopsis, I just tap on the index card, tap on the little I in the toolbar, and this gives me access now to the inspector. And just below the document title, I can tap in there and enter a synopsis. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, pop the keyboard out of the way. And now if I come back out here, if I tap back at the top, 
Now it mightn't appear straight away if I just tap this icon at the top and then go back into here. There we go. That's refreshed the synopsis on the index card. And as before, if I want to use this view for rearranging my sections or my documents, tap and hold, and then I can just move these around. Now, if we look at the corkboard views for the other sections, so if I go into research, I can see my image, my sample PDF, my HTML page, and my research notes. And then, well, Trash actually has got some stuff in at the moment because I uh, deleted a folder before when I was testing things out. So there is just uh, another intro seek folder that I used before. Let's just go back up to the types of podcasts. Another way to get to the inspector, although you can see the icon in the top toolbar above the document, you can tap and hold within the sidebar within the binder to bring up the inspector uh, in a slightly wider view. We'll say done to that. Now, as we saw on the Mac, one of the really useful things in Scrivener is a split screen view. And that there is a special type of split screen view on the iPad and the way we get to that well in fact there are two ways to get to it firstly I'll show you how to get to it from the corkboard view so let's go into a corkboard if I tap on this little settings icon down at the bottom and select expanded you'll see we actually get a slightly wider sidebar what we can actually do now uh, this is a really neat feature of enabling split view uh, within the iOS application is on one of these cork boards, let's say the Enhanced Podcasts cork board, if I just swipe across on the card itself from uh, right to left, you'll see it actually pops up in the side panel. And now if I tap on the Audio Podcasts, that appears in the right-hand panel. So this isn't split view, uh, the iPad split view that you normally see within iOS. This is an application-specific split view uh, just for Scrivener. So what we can do here, well, they are both editable. So I can tap in that one. I can tap in this one and edit both. Um, I can actually use a pinch gesture if I want to make them bigger. I can zoom in and pinch out again. Now to put things back as they were, if I tap back on there, that takes me back to the corkboard view and back up in the top left, takes me back to my podcast guide. Now, another way to do this, um, we'll do it again from the corkboard view, but uh, let's go ahead and go to our enhanced podcasts in the uh, right-hand panel. But let's say I now wanted to go to what is a podcast in the left-hand panel. Uh, that's a completely separate document. If I swipe in the sidebar, say more, and tap quick reference, right, we now get what is a podcast in the left-hand side and enhanced podcasts on the right-hand side. We'll just go back. And back there takes us back to the corkboard view. And by the way, with the corkboard view, if you've got lots of index cards, you can use a two finger pinch to uh, increase the size and decrease the size of your index cards. Now, of course, one of the uh, major uses for this split view is really to uh, reference your research material and edit or read your documents within drafts. Now, the way you might actually want to do that, let's go to the research corkboard. Now let's say I wanted to open my copious research notes in the right-hand panel and refer to these while I'm updating a document in my drafts section. So let's go for, let's say the welcome document. If I go into my intro sequence folder, uh, rather than tap on the welcome document, if I swipe across, tap more, tap quick reference, that opens it up in here. I can tap into the document, put a return in. I've got something in my copy buffer actually. If I paste that in, move that out of the way, that's now updated. So to get back to where I was, I can tap back, it takes me back to my research corkboard and tap intro sequence and podcast guide it takes me to the top level of the binder. Just to try and replicate everything that we covered on the Mac on the iPad, I'm going to have a look now at uh, splitting documents. So we saw before with this enhanced podcast document, it was actually a much longer document and we split it at a heading on the Mac. You can do the same on the iPad. So let's go down to the next section here, video podcasts. I could either position the cursor here and then just tap and tap split. In fact, let me do that. You'll see it will basically split it, but it hasn't titled it. It's just named it enhanced podcasts dash one. Let me merge these together, say edit, select the two documents and select merge down at the bottom. We'll say merge. That will put it back as it was. We'll say done. Now, if I want to split with a title, I go back into Enhanced Podcasts, I can find the bit that I want. Now I can tap and I can tap and hold and start to select. Or, and we've not really looked at the keyboard, there is a keyboard 
extension here on the top of the standard keyboard that allows me to select. So that allows me to select the word video and then I can just tap it once and that will select the next word. We'll then just tap the selected area once, tap the arrow, tap split, and now we've got enhanced podcasts and this new section here of video podcasts. We'll talk more about the keyboard and the special keys probably next week, but just to carry on and replicate what we did on the Mac side of things, let's take a look at the document header and footer. At the top of the header, we have uh, left to right, we have a full screen mode, this dual headed arrow, tap on there. And to come out of there, we just tap podcast guide again, takes us back to the standard presentation. Options to go to the previous document, back to our document, and down to the next document. Let's go back to video podcasts. The inspector appears in the sidebar. And again, if I wanted to, I could just tap and hold in the sidebar to bring up the inspector. We'll say done. The next icon opens up the recent documents panel. So I can quickly uh, jump to a recent document. Let's just tap that to close it again. And then the loop to go into search mode. And there's some additional search modes here. Find, find and replace, find and replace all, etc. Okay, I'll just tap away from there. I'll say done. Pop the keyboard out of the way. And then next to the uh, search loop, we have the ability to add a new document. But I'll say cancel to that. Now, as far as the footer is concerned, uh, we have the option to create a bookmark. Uh, we saw that before, so let's create a bookmark for this one. And next to the bookmarks icon, we have this little hamburger icon, which takes us into Scrivening's mode, which is the uh, same or similar to Scrivening's mode across over on the Mac. And this is whereby we can actually see um, all our documents laid out uh, contiguously so that we can either use our finger to scroll up and down, and you'll see at the bottom there's a slider as well. I can actually use that to slide up and down. Or if I want to, I can tap on the arrows to jump through a document at a time. Now the text in this mode is quite small, but I've already switched on zoom in the editor. And you can actually switch that on in this panel as well by going to settings, use editor zoom, we'll switch that on. Right, and that makes it a lot easier to see. So again, I can use this scrubber down at the bottom to go backwards and forwards. If I wanted to edit something, uh, basically what will happen, rather than editing in this panel, if I tap on here, it takes me through to that particular document. Now on the center of the uh, footer is my word count. I've currently 49 words in this particular document. If I tap on here, I can actually see the number of words in the draft section. I can tap to set a target. Let's say I want to have a target of 2000 words. I can select words or characters. We'll leave it with words. Show over and I'll leave off come back to target. So I can see my progress here. If I want to set a session target, say I wanted to type 100 words in this session, I can just select that. Uh, words or characters again, count draft only, which is fine. Come back out of targets. And then if I tap away, if I tap in here and add some additional text. Put that out of the way. Tap in here. And I can now see in the outer circle um, the session target. So I've uh, barely scratched the surface of my session target. I've had three of a hundred words. If I want to start a new session, just tap to start new session and that will set it back to zero. And then finally, across on the right hand side, the option to compile a draft. We'll look at compiling in the next episode. Send a copy to another application, open in another app, or sync now. In fact, I think I will sync now. We haven't uh, done any syncing, so I'm going to sync now. That's going to sync all my changes back with Dropbox. And now when I go to my Mac, I will have the up-to-date version of the file across on my Mac. Uh, it doesn't automatically sync. You do have to initiate the sync each time. So let's finish off by having a look at the research section. So here I can access my PNG file that I dragged in on the Mac, my sample PDF, the research notes, and the HTML URL that I pulled in as well. And these are all zoomable, so I can use a two-finger pinch to zoom in and zoom out. Similarly with the uh, PDF. Again, zoom in, zoom out. And the nice thing with Scrivener is these files are all contained within the project file, so they uh, travel along with you. Now, to get additional information in here, uh, some icons across the bottom. We've had a look at the settings icon, but we'll probably revisit that next week when we have a look at some of these other options. I'll close that down. We have the compile option, which again, we'll come back to next week. And then we have this option here. Uh, in the middle, which is to open files from other applications. The other two icons are to create a folder and to create a new document in this section. But let's go ahead and tap the middle icon. 
So I've got access to my photo library, iCloud Drive, Dropbox. So all the document providers that are currently installed on this device, uh, I can actually reference from here. Uh, so let's go into PDF Expert, where we know there are some PDFs residing. So this is the local folder of PDF Expert. I've got this PDF Expert guide. Let's say I wanted to use that as some reference information. Tap on here. That pulls in the document. So there's my PDF. OK, all fairly straightforward. Let me just come out. And let's go back out to projects. And you'll notice that uh, the Dropbox icon has this little blue indicator. Now that just tells me that uh, I've made changes to that particular file. Uh, it's not synchronized with Dropbox. Remember, you have to manually synchronize these things. So what I need to do now is just tap on the synchronization option. Now it takes a little bit longer on the last one because it's actually synchronizing that uh, large PDF that I added in to my file. But right, that's now gone in. So now I can go across to my Mac, open the project file and all that research material and all the changes I've made to the Scrivener documents will be held within that file. OK, so that's it for this week. As I say, I really wanted to cover the basics of Scrivener. It's a very complex and very capable application. So in the next episode, we'll take a look at some of the more advanced features and some of the customizations you can do to make it work uh, in your own particular way. But that's it for this week. I'll be back next time, so I'll speak to you then.